Hello, this is Jack Jackson. We've reached the end of Unit 1 uh, as far as going over new material, and so now we're going to start going over some review exercises. So this will be broken up into, looks like going to be five uh, videos here, each with approximately five of the exercises. So these review questions are designed to help you test your mastery of the material of the unit and to help you focus your study for the practice test and the exam. Of course, you should first work through all the slides and videos in the playlist above and, of course, the graded homework sets online if you're in my class. So the following will be a collection of review exercises. What you should do is work through these exercises on your own using only what you would be allowed to use on an exam. In my class, that would be a note card of notes, your calculator, and a pencil and paper. Be sure to work out each exercise completely before going on to the following slide, where you will see a solution with which you can check your answers and the process you use to get them. If you watch the corresponding videos, which you're doing now, be sure to pause the video and then work the problems yourself before going on to view the solutions. These problems are coordinated closely with those on my practice test one, so which are in turn coordinated pretty closely with the problems on the unit exam one. So if you can master all the problems in this review, then you should be able to work all the problems on practice test one and unit exam one. So these review exercises should give you uh, a pretty good uh, overview and review of the problems and the types of things we should be able to do for this unit. So here we go. Review exercise one. Define the following terms. Population, sample, parameter, statistic, random sample, and simple random sample. Press pause. Okay, now you're back. Hopefully that means you have worked this out uh, yourself. So here we go. A population is the entire collection of individual study. A sample is a subset of the population which is actually measured. A parameter is a numerical description of some characteristic of a population. A statistic is a numerical de description of some characteristic of a sample. Notice parameter, population, both start with P, they go together. Statistic and sample both start with S, they go together. In a random sample, each individual member of the population is equally likely to be chosen as part of the sample. A simple random sample is even stronger. In a simple random sample, each subset of size n of the population is equally likely to be chosen as the sample. Review exercise two. Let, let the population of interest be all current students at UAFS. Classify each of the following as a parameter or statistic. A the mean grade point average of all UAFS students, B, the mean grade point average of all mathematics majors. Press pause. Well, since the population is all UAFS students, when we describe something about all of the UAFS students, such as the mean grade point average of all UAFS students, we're talking about a parameter because it measures the whole population. So A is parameter. B, the mean grade point average of all mathematics majors. Mathematics majors do not constitute the entire population of all UAFS students. So we're talking about a sample. Uh, so the mean grade point average of that sample would be a statistic. B is statistic. Review exercise three, list and define the two basic types of data. B, list and define the two types of quantitative data. And C, list in increasing order and define the four levels of data. Press pause now. Well, this question allows us to talk about different types of data and different ways of, of breaking out characteristics that data may have. 
So the two basic types are qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative data is also known as categorical, nominal, or, uh, or, cat or categories only data. Quantitative measures using numbers. It is more than just categories. B, list and define the two types of quantitative data. Well, those two types are discrete and continuous. A discrete data takes on finitely many or countably infinite number of values. So uh, maybe only 10 different values that it takes on. Or perhaps it takes on all possible values of, say, whole numbers, but not negatives or numbers in between. So that would be countably infinite. In contrast, continuous data takes on uncountably infinite number of values. So this is going to include like a whole interval of values. So no matter what table you would write down, uh, there are probably portions of that table where there's always numbers in between the table, no matter how finely you break it up. C, list in order and define the four levels of data. Notice that these four levels spell a word, noir, N-O-I-R, nominal, ordinal, interval, ratio. That is an increasing order of what's contained in the data. So nominal data is categories only. Ordinal data has categories and an order within those categories. Interval and ratio data both have numerical categories, order, and the numbers make some sense to them. In the interval data, we do not have a natural zero. So it does make sense to add and subtract quantities, but not to do multiplications and divisions. Interval data is limited pretty much to temperatures and calendars, calendar uh, dates. Ratio, it has the highest level. It has numerical categories, order and quantity with a natural zero so that we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide in this situation. So let's see if we can take what we just did and apply that in the next problem. So review exercise four. A, classify as quantitative or qualitative the color of hair, the weight of a watermelon. B, classify as continuous or discrete, height of a person and number of graduates. C, identify the level of data, year of birth, make of automobile, number of cars in parking lot, or small, medium, and large sizes. Press pause now. Okay, so again, if we're doing Classifying is qualitative or quantitative. Those are your two choices there, color of hair and weight of a watermelon. So what are we looking at there? Well, let's see. Color of hair is qualitative because it only has categories, whereas the weight of a watermelon is quantitative. It has a, new, a meaningful numerical scale. So the next two we want to are numerical, so they're quant quantitative, but we want to know whether that quantity is continuous or discrete measurement. Well, height of a person is continuous, and one of the reasons why we could say it's continuous is it takes on the possibilities of all real values, at least on some reasonable interval. If you think about your own height, you have achieved every height, uh, every continuous number between uh, the height you were when you were born and the height you are today. At some point in your life, you were every height in between. The number of graduates uh, is a discrete. It's a finite number. It's just a count. Identifying the level is identifying that as, again, nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio. The year of birth is interval. That's calendar dates. That's one of the two things that I told you is going to be interval. 
The make of an automobile, that's nominal. It only has categories. There's no inherent order there. The number of cars in a lot, that's a count. That's ratio. That has the full numerical uh, scale, natural zero. Uh, notice that, that the uh, ratio could be discrete or continuous. So this is discrete and ratio. Small, medium, large sizes is ordinal. It has categories with order, uh, but not really a, a real meaningful numerical scale. So that's ordinal data. Now we're going to write down some symbols, formulas, and definitions for the following parameters and statistics. Sample size, population size, population mean, sample mean, population standard deviation, sample standard deviation, range, and z-score. So write down these formulas from memory. I'll press pause now. Well, sample size is the number of items in a sample, and it's referred to as lowercase n. Population size is capital N. It's the number of items in a population. The population mean, what you would probably think of as the average, is found by just adding up all the data values and dividing by how many you have. So we use a, cap, a, a Greek letter mu for the population mean. We typically use um, Greek letters for population parameters and Roman letters or normal letters for sample statistics a lot of times. So x is a x sub k is a particular uh, data measurement. The k is just counting is just a, uh, a counting variable. So x1 would be your first data measurement. X2 is your second one. And this capital sigma means sum them up or add them up. So this says add them up from your first data measurement to your capital nth, which is the last one in the entire population. So we're adding up all our data values and we're dividing by the size of our population, capital N. That gives us our what we normally think of as the average, the population mean mu. The sample mean is the same thing for a sample but we use different symbols. Instead of mu for population, we use x bar. That's just an x with a little bar over it uh, for the sample mean. When we're summing up, we're only summing up to little n, which is the uh, sample size. And of course, we're only dividing by little n. But in both cases, what are we doing? Add them up, divide by how many you have. Now, the pop, the uh, Population or sample standard deviation formulas are a bit harder to work out. Um, and there's a mistake there. Let me fix that. Okay, that's better. So what we're doing here in the standard deviation is we're averaging the squares of deviations from the mean. And that will give you the, what's called the variance. And then you square root that to find the standard deviation. So for our population, we take the x sub k, which is our data measurement. We subtract the mean. Notice that you first need to compute the mean before you have any can even get started with the population standard deviation or standard deviation and variance in general. So again, we take the data measurement minus the mean, and then we square all those things. Then we add all of those up and divide by how many things we have. Okay, so that is the sum from k equals 1 to n of x sub k minus mu quantity squared, divide by n, and then take the square root of all that. Notice it's capital N for population size, it is mu for population mean, and it is sigma for population standard deviation. Now we just almost just replace the symbols as we go from population to sample. We replace the sample standard deviation uh, population standard deviation sigma with the sample standard deviation s. We replace the population mean mu with the sample mean x bar, and we replace the population size n, capital N, with lowercase n here. In the sum, but notice we do something slightly different here. We replace capital N with lowercase n minus 1. This is to correct for a bias. Samples are not as variable as populations, so we need to make the sample standard deviation a little bit larger 
than uh, it would be if we just use n so that will be a better estimate of the population standard deviation so we use an n minus 1 the range is just the maximum minus the minimum and the z-score is the, the measurement, x, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Here's a sample version, and here's a population version. Come on back for the next video. We'll do a few more review exercises.